I've written a console program to do the performance measurements and um, I'm using a base class called performance test right here to run the performance uh, the different performance tests um, I have three method, methods here, measure test A, measure test B, and measure test C. So these are virtual methods, and in um, any derived class, I will put the test code in here. And the format is always that the, the first one, test A, is the baseline test. So this would be unmodified uh, slow code. And then we have two methods, B and C, available to try out different kinds of optimizations. And then for the actual performance test down here, um, the performance test is fairly simple. Basically what I do is um, I go through these test A, test B, and test C methods, and I repeat them a number of times. So you can see there's a constant here, default repetitions, with a value of 10. Um, I basically repeat the test 10 times to average out the effects of the garbage collector, um, because you know an ill-timed collection of the garbage collector can really slow down one of the tests. So if we just run it 10 times, then we average out that effect. To measure performance, um, you're supposed to use the stopwatch class in C Sharp. So when you're doing benchmarking, please don't use date time. Uh, always use stopwatch because uh, stopwatch is a specialized class for uh, measuring time spans extremely accurately. So you can see I always start by um, restarting a stopwatch, um, doing the test, stopping the stopwatch, and then um, I have the elapsed milliseconds right here, and I'm adding that to a variable. And then in the end, you can see right here, I'm returning that total value divided by the number of repetitions. So we're doing 10 repetitions, so you know uh, we have the total elapsed time for every method, and then um, divided by the number of repetitions gives you the average execution time. Okay, so moving on. Structs versus classes. Let me show you the code. I've defined a class with an X and a Y field, and I've defined a struct with an X and a Y field. And then the only thing my code does is um, it fills a list with either classes or structs. So the uh, C test fills a list with structs, the B test fills a list with classes, and the A test fills a list with classes. But well, look at this, the class has a finalizer. So um, when this class gets disposed, the finalizer will be called by the garbage collector. So let's run that code and see what happens. Oops, uh, default iterations. Oops. And so there is the difference. Um, the class with the finalizer takes 246 milliseconds. The normal class takes 111 milliseconds. And the struct takes 6 milliseconds. So that's quite a big difference. Um, the reason for that difference is uh, because of the way that structs and classes are implemented on the heap. When I create a list of classes, this is what the memory will look like. The reference to the list will be on the stack, so it's right here. The list itself is right here on the heap. Uh, the list has a number of elements. Each element is an object reference, so that'll be eight bytes in size. And uh, the reference points to an entirely different location on the heap where the class is stored. So um, if you um, calculate the amount of memory for an um, eight megabyte list, you would actually look at 32 megabytes of heap memory because um, you have to store the list on the heap and you have to store all the different uh, point classes for, for all the data. Now when this gets garbage collected, there's going to be a load of objects on the heap, not just the list, but also all these individual uh, point classes. And they all need to, ha need to be garbage collected to be disposed. If you use a struct, the memory layout looks like this. So we still have the list reference on the stack pointing to the heap. Um, the list is on the heap, but now the data, the struct, is in line in the list itself. This is the difference between a class and a struct. Structs are stored in line within their containing type, whereas classes are stored separately and the containing type contains a reference. So now the entire struct, uh, it's two integers, so the entire struct fits inside uh, eight bytes, in, inside an eight byte element, so now the entire data structure is only eight megabytes and it's only a single object on the heap 
So when the garbage collector has to clean up the memory, it goes to the list, disposes the list, and it's done. That's all it needs to do. So in these kinds of scenarios, using structs is extremely lucrative. Um, if you have lists with a large amount of data, the data itself contains of only a few fields, like X and Y or X, Y, Z coordinates, think of uh, uh, points, vectors, uh, things like that. And you use the um, data for a short amount of time, and then you don't need it anymore. So you only briefly need access to the data. If those three conditions are met, then structs are extremely lucrative to use. And um, finally, the big uh, slowdown uh, in the finalizer is because um, when your classes have a finalizer, the garbage collector needs to call the finalizer one after another to dispose your class, and it does so on a single thread. So uh, if you have one million classes right here on the heap, uh, the garbage collector has to call one million finalizers to get rid of all the data, and that's really going to slow down your code. So uh, and that's why you get this difference in performance.